G'day, Jamie Hall, Definitive Imaging here, and in this video we're going to crack on with part two of the macro photography and focus stacking tutorial, looking at post-processing and editing. Um, this will be a little more of a sort of entry-level overview, not going to go into some of the really technical and complicated edits, I'll save that for a video a bit later, but for now this is going to be a good start point if you're just getting into focus stacking, and there should be some good tricks and other stuff in there if you you're sort of a bit more seasoned. One of the things that I'll be talking about a lot is workflow. Everyone's workflow is a little bit different. Uh, this is my workflow. This is what works well for me. So take uh, advantage and steal little bits from that uh, if you so wish. Uh, another thing that I'll be talking about quite a lot and constantly highlighting is keyboard shortcuts. Uh, using keyboard shortcuts, each you know, bit of software on each program has its own set of shortcuts and some of them are actually quite similar and just being able to work quickly through those images and streamline that process is going to have a huge effect on what you're able to produce. As I highlighted in the last video, if we're going out focus stacking, it's quite easy to come back with hundreds or thousands of images. So the quicker we can work through them, the quicker we can get those stacked down to the single images, the quicker we can actually get onto the editing and the creative part of it. So if you're just getting focus stacking or if you're really enjoying focus stacking, hopefully there's going to be some good tips for you in this video. All right, so let's crack into it. Uh, got Lightroom open here. I could talk about so much of my workflow in terms of actually importing images and all that sorts of stuff. Um, maybe I'll cover that a bit later, but for now I just want to actually get through to the stacking. Um, but I generally will go through my images and pick out bits and pieces that I want from the stacks. It's quite easy for me if I click on an image and I just cycle through and look through them, I know that this is a pretty clean stack. I can see that there's not too much movement. I can see that I've sort of got every little bit of this working through as I come through and I'm not missing off sections. So I will import images or sort of sequences uh, just as I want to edit them rather than importing 5,000 photos. I sort of do an initial call and will just pick and choose different parts that I know look good. So with this first photo, um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be opening them in Helicon Focus. Uh, you can do this in Photoshop, there's also Zareen Stacker and uh, different parts of the software are going to have different abilities. What I have heard from most people is that the Zareen stacker is uh, a bit less user friendly, whereas the Helicon Focus is nice and easy in terms of its um, program and how it works. So I definitely would recommend that. You can do some stacking in Photoshop and it does work pretty well, but it's just super processor hungry. So, I mean, I have here 23 images and it's just actually just going to eat up my uh, processor trying to do that. I can do it, but it's a bit painful. So if you're getting into focus stacking, I'm going to recommend Helicon Focus. So nice and easy, going to come straight away and export them into Helicon Focus. This does take a few seconds. Uh, a lot of the uh, parts of editing that I'll do on this video is going to be a little bit time consuming. So I'll just fast forward those so that we don't have to watch them. Okay, so um, got our images in Helicon. This is going to be quite a simple one. We haven't got loads of hairs to worry about. We haven't got loads of uh, huge different perspectives. So like a portrait stack, you're really going very far on the images. So lots of images, even though this is 23, it's a relatively short stack. Uh, you have three options here, A, B, C. Um, I will generally always for a first point going to go for B. Um, what B is going to do is it's going to slowly work through the image as you can see here, find out the bits are in focus and then it's going to come back through the other way and start to build that in, which is what you can see happening here. Um, now having processed this image already, I know that this image is, is pretty easy. It's almost flawless in terms of the stack and, and there's not a whole lot to do. But there are still some things which are going to be really uh, helping in terms of getting the image from good to absolutely great. 
Okay, so once we have this image, I'm going to have a quick look around and just see if anything's not looking too clean. Again, keyboard shortcut for this, command and the plus sign, control and the plus sign for Windows. And then I'm just going to two finger scroll around and have a little look. So you can see that the edges on here, not quite very good. Edges on here, not quite very good. And um, I'm pretty sure knowing this header that everything else is is pretty reasonable so I can move forwards one thing that we will have and this is going to be sort of covering the workflow part you see on this edge here we are losing the definition on this edge and this uh, is generally referred to as ghosting but this is one of the biggest sort of editing parts of macro photography in general and the thing that you're going to be doing most of the times your images is fixing for the ghosting and that sort of edging that comes along with it However, I don't really do that in Helicon, and I'll explain that a bit later. What I do do in Helicon is just very quickly tidy up any edges that aren't quite right. So all these edges generally look pretty good until we get to the antenna. And anyone that's sort of reasonably familiar with Helicon is going to know that I can just go into the retouching. The retouching will allow me to pick from my source image, which is on the left, and apply that to my composite image. So I'm just going to quickly click down on these images, find the one where the antenna is looking in focus. Cool, looking good there. And I can just nice and simply paint this in. Paint this in. Da, 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 da. Happy days. Now, as you can see, what this is doing is adding a bit more ghosting onto this uh, side of the antenna here. So again, that's something that I don't use and I don't generally fix in Helicon. And one of the reasons that I think is Helicon is quite slow. As you can see, as I'm moving around, it's sort of a bit jaggedy. Uh, it has a bit of a tendency to crash. And once it crashes, you lose all your work, which is just an absolute nightmare. And because I know I'm going to end up going into Photoshop uh, and fixing some stuff later and doing some other work, I try and steal as much workflow and as much editing as I can from Helicon and put it into Photoshop purely for again for workflow and for speed and for efficiency so I so said I do do the edging in here uh, again another good keyboard shortcut if you use your bracket keys I'm changing the size of my brush here so this is something that I also use a lot in Photoshop so I just finished off this edging come in here this all looks pretty good. And everything's going to be a little bit slapdash and a bit quickly done just for the sake of it. Now, I've just erased this. I could now go into the next image or the image that's further down here and, and then paint in the background here and, and build this up. But then I've got like that orange ghost in there so I just don't do any of that I just get the antenna where I want it to be and just take all the other stuff out one thing I will do just because it is there is quickly clean up on this claw on the end there and happy days that's, that's pretty much clean enough I can do I could do with just grabbing a little bit more on the base of this antenna but I'm really not going to go um, too far in terms of making this tidy because I'm going to cover it later but there we go uh, again command and the minus will help me zoom out and I can have a look all looks pretty good so once I have this and again part of the workflow so I'm going to save this image as it is so I'm going to use command s or we can use control s and I'm going to bring this up now I have a, a pre-named file name for this so it comes up with the first of the last image uh, the first image of this is and it comes up with stacked and then I put in the number of frames 23 frames and I also put in the stacking method so I put in B what this means uh, just in terms of being able to find images later on if I want to find my stacked images all I have to do in my search for Lightroom is put in stacked and every single one of my images will come up that I stacked. So it's just really easy in terms of finding it. And um, the 23 images, uh, it, I don't suppose it really matters, but a lot of people don't uh, advertise how many images they have in a stack. And I just really like to know. So I will always have that as standard and I'll put in 23B as a stacking method. 
and just going to press enter and that's going to save that it will export it when i quit the program which is what it says there but for now i'm also going to do a stack in c now this is not going to be too integral for this particular image but i would recommend in general that you do a b and a c and we'll cover that off uh, a bit later but i pretty much in most instances we'll do a B and a C stack even if I don't think that I need it so that they're there so I'll cover off some of the differences between B and C a bit later but for now we're just going to worry about the B I'm still going to save this again command S 23 C absolutely easy now I'm going to tell you all the keyboard shortcuts that I use and I, it might seem a little bit anal a bit crazy but honestly the just so I'm going to quit this program and if I come up to this quit just this movement when I'm going in this program like 10 15 times like that's you know that's an extra minute that I spent doing that and then every program that I do that the time just builds up so command Q happy days that has quit the program and that then imports my two files so I have my two files here my B and my C so I am going to put this into Photoshop and a lot of this editing tutorial is going to be based around Photoshop just because it is so quick and so powerful and again there are times where I need to use Photoshop to fix something or to repair part of the image anyway and there are other times where it's just again about streamlining the process so I'm going to put this into, uh, into Photoshop and the first thing I'm going to do is work on this edging if we press S on the keyboard we're going to go into our stamp tool again the brackets work the same on this so right bracket big left bracket smaller and if we hold down shift if we have a look up on this top left we're actually going to have different hardness as well so I'll bring it a bit closer to the hardness and the softness and this is going to be what the bread and butter is for me in terms of editing it kind of borderlines a bit more on like some of the artistic side and you've got to sort of find the sweet spots but I will give you some of the little cheats that I do here to make it nice and easy. In most images um, I am going to be able to get rid of this ghosting by using the material that is surrounding it anyway and a lot of that comes from just matching the texture and the colour. Um, as a general rule, I'm going to be working at about a 50% ish hardish brush um, in terms of how uh, hard the actual thing is. And then most importantly is our flow. So our flow is going to be the amount of uh, pressure or the opacity of the change. So at 50% it's going to be 50%. So if I for example, take this here, you can see it's a little bit faded and if I change my flow to 20% and take that you can see it's even less faded but you know we can keep going over it and that's basically what that'll do so it's 20% but if we keep going over the same bits it's going to go 20, 40, 50. To change our flow again shift and any number so if I go 10 uh, 1 goes to 10 if I go 3 to 50 shift and 5 goes to 50%. I pretty much use a flow of 50% all the time. What this will help do is blend because it's not sort of full hard opacity. Same with this brush, it's like soft edges. So we're looking to make all of these changes seamless. We don't want anyone to know that we've had to do this manipulation and you know we want it to be nice and clean and easy looking. So with a 50% brush, nice and soft, reasonably small on my stamp tool if i press option um alt on uh, windows i'm just going to grab an area to then start painting this in now if i grab the area exactly above what we'll love what we'd get there often is sort of like doubling so you can see around here we've got doubling here we've got doubling here doubling here so it just looks a bit more messy so if you're going to be grabbing areas you want to grab an area not immediately above so that when we start to put this in we don't get that sort of immediate doubling nice and close now what we can do to make this process even quicker if we hold down shift from start to end point it will do the whole line for us i'll just demonstrate that on here again so i'll come somewhere not immediately below 
start painting in and rather than holding down the whole thing I'm just going to press shift and just paint those in like so it doesn't matter if we make a little mistake here same again with a bit of doubling we can pull that out nice and easy but essentially i'm going to work through this and again the keyboard shortcut's going to make this easy so i can work on this pretty fast i'm just going to go grab that there come down here grab that there you know and then just i'm just constantly grabbing bits that i know are going to look pretty seamless and just able to paint these in nice and easy. I'm, I'm doing it really kind of roughly. So I come over here, do the same thing. Like I'm not, I'm not really anally having to go through this. It's a, it's a quick process. It's for me a shed load quicker than Helicon and I can just come and, and paint all this stuff in. So in the matter of no time at all, whoops, not so good there. So I've now gotten rid of some of this edging as it were so those antenna are pretty much done there is going to be some doubling again so we've got the doubling here because i work quickly and i just want it to be bish bash bosh but i'm not too worried about the occasional double because i can take that again out really easily with a heel uh, tool so j is for your spot healing brush you can do the same thing in terms of your hardness so hard and soft depending on what the nature of the blend is that you're doing or the heel all you've got to do is paint over that same i could do that also for here it might not do it perfectly but it has done it perfectly this time and again if i want to clean up so uh not everything needs to be clean this is obviously a big dirty leaf so i'm not going to go and clean all this it's completely pointless but maybe there's a little bit of dust on here that that just doesn't need to be here or they have a, a bit of twig or a stick sticking out something that is pulling focus away from say the cool detail and kind of crazies of this back if, the, if he's got something sticking out of the antenna or something else that's just distracting then i'm going to remove it and a lot of these parts of the editing is not that every image should be edited to with an inch of its life and it should look super clean i mean they are bugs and we want that we want some of that dirt and some of that debris to give it a bit of texture and to make it look genuine but I'm going to show you the things that when artistically or compositionally they just distract or don't look right, you have the ability to be able to move them. So again, with, with the J, if this was just stuff, it's super easy to just come and clean off these dots. Again, I wouldn't do it for this image, but this just so quick. I could just very quickly tap, 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 going to go smaller again, using the keyboard shortcuts. Like I'm, I can do all of this nice and easy and quickly. If you want to, um, you can do all of this on a new layer. Um, I'm not too fussed about it myself. Um, they call it sort of destructive or non-destructive. So if I create a new layer and do the same thing, we need to make sure sample all layers is ticked, then I can come and I will make the changes to this layer but it's not actually changing the whole image it's just putting all the changes on this new set layer so it's not being destructive to the image and we can essentially always go back if we want but in no time at all I can come and clean these all off and then if I were to change this layer it's just going to show me what I've done I don't need to keep that edit there so I generally for this part work on the same layer i'm not worried about keeping the sort of edits that i've done on there so i'm going to be whizzing through a lot of this very quickly there's loads of things to cover um which you can slow down and practice and pause the video and so on but rather than getting like into the crazy detail and uh, really having to spoon feed everything i'm just want to try and get as much information out there as possible um, using this image as an example, um, there are some times where maybe you missed an edge. As you can see here, I didn't really put this edge in too well. And again, we've got some more ghosting around here. Uh, a little trick that you can use again, so this is probably a better example, just a really tiny small thing that I've missed um, that I might have done in Helicon, but I don't, I, I don't really need to worry about it when I have edges there that I can use again using the stamp tool. So S, I can take a sample there 
and then I just need to move it down. Give it a couple of taps so the opacity is good. Remove that doubling that's there. And if that won't remove it, then I can just start to work on my edging again here. And then when I get down to that doubly bit, you can see at the moment I'm, I'm going kind of soft, so it's softly going over the edge. But when you come to the actual edge, uh, I'm going to go for a, and like if I'm trying to delete something, I'm going to go for a hard brush. So I've got a nice hard edge. And I use this often um, in terms of fixing bits that are either a tiny bit out of focus or the edging hasn't done right. So this part here, again, this looks quite soft compared to everything else that's hard. This is quite soft but I can kind of fake it so it makes it look like it's in focus. If I take a portion here and I have it on the hard brush setting, so I put it on the hardest brush, nice and small, I can just work my way along the edge and now we have a really nice hard edge so it doesn't look any more like it's actually missed focus. It looks like that is in focus. And I can actually do that with quite a lot of things and, and I will often when there is a tiny bit of the image that doesn't look right like again here so i'm going to go to the stamp tool going to take that little edge there and bring that edge down and then it's just a matter of blending this in so i need to go softer brush again and then just blend this in and work my way around like that but with these just these techniques so just with the spot healing brush and um and the stamp tool I can pretty much clean up this whole image and again for the the ease of being able to fix the problems that are very laborious or very hard in Helicon I know that I can do them so much quicker here so I, I just work around the edges on this and in no time at all it's going to be pretty fixed it would take me five minutes to to fix this image and make it look um, like there's no ghosting and stuff on there it doesn't really take any time at all so there we go really nice first technique for fixing and tidying some of your images do the basics around the eyes I'll cover that a bit later there are some edges which are definitely much easier to do in Helicon as I said these parts you don't want to actually miss or not include the part of the animal that you need if if this like tiny bit is out of focus uh, or if it's uh, you know a section is a bit missing we can fix it but if it doesn't appear at all then uh, it, it can be pr problematic once we've got that again command save gonna save that and that will auto import that into Lightroom ready to be edited and go into the creative part All right, let's look at a, another image. So I'm gonna go for one a bit more complicated. Gonna look at this Huntsman Spider. I've got another stack here, which I know is reasonably clean. You can see I've not really missed sections. They are leaning on the tree, so there's not much movement. It's not tilting, it's not twisting, and the detail and exposure is all quite good. When it loads, you can see this all really nice in there, well exposed, so I'll use this as the next example, but this one is a bit more complicated but will help highlight um, the whole reason for the B and C. So back in Helicon just going to go for a render on the B and just see if any edges get missed out. Again that's the only thing that I'm really looking for in Helicon to make sure that there's nothing sort of grossly out of place. So let that do its thing. It's going to have a zoom in. Edges all look pretty good, as we can see we're not really missing too much here, all looking good, all looking good. One thing that we are going to have a problem with on this image, as we start to get through to where the hairs overline the background, we're losing the focus. And one of the reasons that, that is because the B method is, is prioritising some of that detail over the actual differences in the focus plane. So I'm going to save this one again, command S, I'll put in 12 and B, press enter, and then straight away I'm going to go into my C method and run a C stack as well. 
Now when we look at the C, what we can notice in between these hairs, we've actually got all of this focus area. So it, this has prioritized making sure that we've got all of that focus plane in from the images, but it's not quite as defined and the definition is not as good. You see the difference here in between the B and the C, it's missing loads of hairs here because it's trying to figure out the best way to do it. Whereas the C method, we've got the hairs, they're a bit fainter in a lot of places, but we've got this background. So I will do a save on the C method. So 12 and C, save that and then just command Q to quit the program again. Okay, back into Lightroom. Now, one thing I haven't mentioned as of yet, uh, this uh, technique, as it were, um, as far as I'm aware, has been pioneered by the legendary Ben Smallworld. Um, ben is, I, I use the word pioneer, and it's, it's quite accurate. Ben has either pioneered or come up with quite a few different intricacies that can really send an image stratospheric really just make it so much better take out a load of your labor so i have ben to thank for teaching me some of these techniques the bcb method which we're about to learn now is directly from him he was the person that i know that came up with it uh, he was talking about this a long time ago and I never tried it for like six months. And then when I did, I was really annoyed that I hadn't been doing it for the last six months. So once we have our B, C, you can see down here, I've got my C there, my B, and they are just ever so slightly different. We'll zoom in and we can see there that C is just uh, a bit more soft and B is a lot more defined. So once we've got that, we'll bring those back into Helicon again. And we're just gonna go back into that B method. And what that will do is it will keep the definition from the B. So we'll get a lot more. It will also help replace the hairs that were missed from the B, but it's also now gonna bring in loads of this background that we missed before. So compared to the B on this side, so this is the original B, this is now the BCB method. And we've got loads more there that we've also got loads more hairs coming in so absolutely just happy days this is an, this is a game changer in terms of being able to reduce the amount of work you need to fix the image in regards to what i was showing you in photoshop last time with that as soon as you have something that's hairy and you have loads of tiny little bits that are distorting or changing the focus plane it's going to be a bit of a going to be a bit more of a uh, struggle for the AI to try and stack it. Uh, now, again, I haven't done anything in terms of any retouching in Helicon here. I could do some more now and go through it, but, you know, this looks pretty damn bang on. There's only a few things that are missing and I'm just I'm just not going to do it in Helicon. I just I just refuse to do it. If, if the edges are missing, then I'm going to do an edge here. But, you know, I'm looking through this image and it looks pretty damn good. There is nothing that I feel I need to do at this point that's really going to worry me. So I'm going to save that. And my naming convention now, I'm going to keep the 12 and I put HY, whoops, HYBD, which is basically hybrid. So it's a BCB hybrid. And again, I can search my whole library for stacked or I can search my whole library for HYBD and know that they are the hybrid stacks. So I'm going to save that one. All right, so back into Lightroom and now I have my hybrid BCB and just look how clean this is. Like there's barely a hair out of place. Just looks absolutely fantastic. Now, if I'm really like loving this image and I spent time on it and so on, I am going to bring it into Photoshop and I am going to clean those things that I think aren't looking quite perfect or where I want them. And a lot of the time it's going to be the hairs. On something like Instagram, if you're posting sort of low quality or it's a compressed quality, some of this stuff is just not really going to be noticeable anyway. But you are going to find some more obvious ones where the hair just doesn't continue and isn't connected. So let's see if I can find one to work on here. Okay, so there's there's really not too much on on this one, but you see this hair here. This this one is not uh, sort of completing along. So again, using my stamp tool, 
S on the stamp tool, Option or Alt to take the sample. I'm just going to sample up nice and high here, and then I'm just going to follow this down, and I'm just going to repeat that. So I'll do it again. There we go. And now that hair is complete. That can be a bit more time consuming if you're going to do that for every single hair and every single hair is messy. But, you know, sometimes I'm just going to take them out. So this partial bit of hair, I'm just going to heel, heel brush, move it away. Just don't need it in there. It just looks it just looks dirty or messy. And again, I'm just looking to have my time spent the best that I can in terms of fixing this image and making it look right. But with this BCB method, it's looking pretty dead on. There's there's really not not a hell of a lot that needs to be done here. And the stamping is just so forgiving as well. Like You can just be so slapdash with it. Cool. There is another image that is stacked pretty beautifully. Looking great. Happy days. Okay, going to look at something slightly more complicated now. This is something that comes up a fair bit. I've got this cool fly stack. I actually posted it quite recently. You can see really nice and stable again. Not much movement in there. All looking good. So I will again put these into Helicon. Now this stack is a portrait stack. So we're going front to back, which means there is loads more... Uh, focus plane that we are working through in the stack there is uh, a lot more depth in the stack which means there's more images and it means there is more um, area for there to be problems in the AI to try and stack this and this is a pretty good example of why this is problematic but I will again show you how I fix this I think much easier um, in Photoshop so I've actually got this in focus from the very tip here and it goes pretty much to the end of the eye. As so I press the B method on Helicon, you can see that it picks up the antennae, but as it works through the eyes, it loses it and it prioritizes the, eye, prioritizes the eyes. I think there's just so much texture and detail there that it just makes it just not really continue on there and the same with the c method as well on this the c method just is not very good for this i zoom in and i've lost all of the detail on this front end sometimes again it's desirable with something that i spoke about you know maybe you want that focus fall off maybe it looks a little bit cleaner but using this as the example if you do want that antenna or anything sticking out in front or something that's coming out the side if you want all of it in focus and you think it looks off then we're gonna to have to find a way to fix this we can again go into our retouching but for the same reasons that i said before i find this just quite slow and quite clunky and I've either got two choices so I'm going to come and I'm going to edge this off and then I'm going to go down into this other layer and have to find the right layer let's see how long it actually takes me find the right layer and then I'm going to have to paint this back again using this on the edges and you see it's just still a little bit edgy there so I'll come in a bit closer and it's just not very clean this like I feel like it's really finite and just quite time consuming to coming through this edging other people may disagree and maybe they sort of love this but for me knowing that I'm likely to do some stuff in Photoshop anyway uh, this just it doesn't look quite right and it looks a bit dirty plus then this one is a bit easier but this one there's a long line of focus here so it's actually going to be coming in to do the tip so i'm just going to have to do the tip okay and then i'm going to have to go down another to the next one and do the tip and then the next one and again like this just feels like it's eating up valuable time in my life so simpler way to do this i'm going to come into the rendering um, as i said the c method doesn't work either so i'm going to find a nice little sweet spot for just the antennae so this here to here is just the antennae so i'm going to take all of the other ones and i'm going to unselect them uncheck selected 
and I am just going to stack the uh, antenna at the front. I keep saying antenna, I don't, I think it's actually called something else, but nevertheless, I'm going to stack that. Look at that, nice and easy, super clean, super easy. So I'll save that. That is going to be one, two, three, seven. So I'll just say seven B. This is going to be not kept, so I don't care quite as much as a naming convention, but I will do that. I'll then take these ones off, uncheck, and then I will stack the rest of the fly. Check these ones. So now I'm going to miss the antennae. It doesn't really matter. I think it's about 14. So what I'm left with now, I have one where I have these little prongs in front in focus and one where I have the rest of the fly in focus. Again, I'm going to go into Photoshop. In this instance, it's going to be easiest to probably open these as layers. You can open them separately and then bring them in together, but open them with layers in Photoshop or just put them right next to each other, which for this instance, without that movement and the stack hasn't changed the movement, um, is going to make it a lot easier. We can check that again. If I just turn this off and on, there's not a whole lot of difference between these two things. It's not twisted or pivoted. So nice and simple. What I'm going to do, I'm going to drag this antenna one down to the bottom. And then on this top layer, I'm going to create a mask. And what the mask is going to do, anything white is shown and anything black is not shown. So if I press B, which is my brush tool, I'm going to make it nice and big with my bracket and clicked on the mask. Currently got black selected. So if I paint here, it is going to delete the top layer. I'm actually going to change my flow here. Shift and zero is 100. One is 110 and zero is 100. But I'm actually going to shift this to 100 for now just to make this nice and easy. But you can see what I have here is a really nice, clean uh, antennae. And simply, if you press X, it's going to change this. So I'm now going to go to white and paint this back in using my brush. And again, I can get nice and quicker and easier into this. And using the same technique that I said last time, if I go really hard on my brush, as you can see in the top left now, even if I sort of go over the edge, it, it just doesn't matter because it just makes it look cleaner. It makes it look like it's not got any soft edges there. So again, the hardness of this brush means that I can make this look just a bit tidier. Again, I've gone over there. I might go back and do that if I was sort of really caring about the edit, but we can see with that hard edge that it's just keeping it nice and defined. Cool. And there we have it. Now we have this whole thing in focus. Looks super clean, super easy, nothing to go on there. And then if I need to, you know, there's just a bit of ghosting here. So again, I'm going to come back to my stamp tool, going to soften up my brush, go to 50% flow and just paint some of that in just so it's not looking like it's a bit different. And again, so you see this, this edge here, this is probably because I haven't quite stacked quite far down enough on that antenna shot. So it's an error that I made. But again, if I just pick this bit and go hard on my brush, I generally would actually keep this at 50% still because I can go over it twice. I need to make sure I select the actual image and not the mask now because I'm picking up off there. And look, I can just clean this edge up and just make it look much, much nicer and much more in focus again here. So what I'm really trying to prove here is just knowing that there are things that I can achieve so much easier and better in Photoshop for this part. I'm just going to do it all here because it's much easier. Again, so this is one of the distractions that I'm talking about. Really nice image for me in this image particularly. I don't need these little bits of fluff. I think that it's kind of a bit distracting. I don't think it adds anything to the image. So with the J, I'm just going to come down and just 
remove this from the image. I'll take that back, get a bit smaller, and again I can hold down shift to just do a single line. There you go, another image looking super clean and tidy. If I did think that maybe this was distracting then I, I could do the same thing here. I actually don't think I did do it for this image, maybe I did, but I can just come and just remove that as well. Super easy, super simple. Again, this is artistic choices, you know. I I don't necessarily agree with like over manipulation. I'm not saying that every image needs like a million things done to it and they should all be like super glamour retouched. But you know, if, if you think that it looks better in the image, then you know, make the choice. This just gives you the tools to be able to uh, adapt and change the things that aren't looking quite right for you. So I'll save that again. And we'll go back into Photoshop, uh, back into Lightroom. This is uh, another example of the same thing. So this is a really, really nice, awesome long, longhorn beetle shot I got. When you do the uh, B or C stacking, we basically get the same thing happening, which is on this image. So body's all really nice, but then the antenna is is always going to be end up missed off this image. It does exist here when we can see it through the stack but it just won't appear. So again, what I can do is I can just stack that bit and then I can just stack the body and then amalgamate them two using exactly the same technique. All right, so that is um, the very first sort of basic parts. Uh, I could go into a lot more detail on every single part of this, but uh, I, I just wanted to sort of start to suggest some of the tools that I'm using uh, and how I process my images, because I think that it's a lot more stable and a lot quicker than than using just Helicon. And I think it will, it, it's so transferable, the just using that stamp tool and the heel brush, I can do a million different things um, in terms of cleaning and refining the image. And when it comes down to getting more complicated, when, you know, antennas are entirely moving um, out of place or for the, for this example, the, the, the tongue out on this, trying to stack this, that has some movement in it you're going to have to start using some additional techniques but i'm falling back on exactly the same stuff the stamp and the heel brush i'm just manipulating it a bit more i'm just creating them things that might not even be there you know like so for this image i am never going to see part of this in focus because the tongue's in the way but I can just steal that from another part of the image and I can put that in there and that's something that I'm going to cover in a, a later video but this is just a bread and butter in terms of fixing some of your images and honestly I, I just don't think it's a whole lot of work I think once you're comfortable in uh, Photoshop and the layers which is can be a bit more complicated but I don't really mind with the destruction stuff but once you have it once you are any kind of comfortable in Photoshop and you can seamlessly do those two things on the layers and you're good with your keyboard shortcuts so I'm changing my flow changing my blend changing my size and I'm just like whiz 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 like it is just all happening and I'm just kind of on autopilot for it. A lot of it is like kind of messy. It doesn't need to be this like really finite, intricate, everything perfect because I can fix it using these techniques. So hopefully that's helpful. That is sort of the basic overview or the first sort of steps in your editing. Uh, there are some things that you still should do um, in Helicon like this weevil shot. So in this weevil image, um, when I stacked this, the edge of these eyes just didn't come up. And that's one of the uh, key parts that you should be doing in Helicon every time. The eyes are often the most important part of the image. It's where your eye is drawn to. It's what you look at. It's kind of the um, the soul of the subject a lot of the time. So when I stacked this, um, this, these are just the singles, but when I stacked it, the edge was super, super soft. And when you have the soft edge, 
you then just miss out the detail, not just on this very edge, on this sort of very fringing edge here, but also sort of a centimetre inside, you miss out some of the detail as well. So that becomes quite hard, especially on these more compound styled eyes to fix in Photoshop. So edging of the eyes and uh, other edges, then do that in Helicon because uh, trying to recover that back is an absolute nightmare. And for someone like me who deletes uh, all my stacks once I've done it, there has been once or twice where I've got a lot further on in my workflow and realised that they just nev I never had the edge of that eye. And you kind of can't really create it, um, the, the nature of those compound eyes and the patterns. Uh, aren't really creatable trust me i've tried um but otherwise uh get comfortable in a photoshop and moving those things around and hopefully that helps you with some of the issues that you've been having uh feel free to leave a comment or tell me anything uh, that you might do as well i'll cover off some stuff um, in the next video in terms of some more advanced issues when they come up uh, crazy moving antenna is definitely one of them uh, the tongue on that uh, gecko and also i think i have a, uh, a porsche uh, spider which is going to be an absolute nightmare which i haven't edited and <laughs> it's been there for like nine months so maybe uh, i'll do that one on video hopefully this helped uh, let me know what helped what didn't what you think is different and thanks for joining catch you later